Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for New Blue Effects, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're talking animation inside of Titler Pro. Now in this lesson, what I want to do is I want to start out by talking about preset animations inside of Titler Pro, how you can get access to them, and how they're going to help speed up your workflow, especially if you're just getting started with Titler Pro. Then we're going to move on to talk about keyframing, how you're going to get in and add those keyframes to your animations. And lastly, we're going to wrap up by talking about the Elastic Timeline. Now, if you're not familiar with the Elastic Timeline, I guarantee you, once you see how it works, you're going to be going back to it all the time, especially if you happen to be working with a producer who you find is always changing the duration of titles that you have in your productions. Okay, let's keep our introduction short. Let's just get into Media Composer and Titler Pro, and let's get started. Okay, so let's Command and Tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab from my Windows friends out there. And as you can see, I've just set up a range in my timeline to apply my title to. Of course, we're not going to apply it to the actual video clip, because we want the flexibility of being able to get in and adjust that title as easily as possible. What I'm going to do, simply hit Command and 8 on the Mac Control and 8 on Windows. We're going to head down to my New Blue Titler Pro 2.5 category inside of the effects palette. Of course, now if you're working with 2.0, of course, you'll see version 2.0's category right there. I'm going to take Titler Pro 2.5, simply take that effect, drag it and drop it right down here onto my timeline. And what I'm going to do to get access, of course, to the effect is to simply right click and come down to add edit title. Now, something I do want to throw out there, you know, I went to the, you know, the whole process of going to the effects palette, taking the effect, dragging it down into the timeline, but I don't actually have to do that if I don't want to. What I do have the ability to do is to simply right click on any portion of the timeline. And in this case, I created a five second space for my title to appear. But what I can do is simply just right click and say, add edit title. And of course, instead of editing a title, I'm going to be asked if I want to add a title. Now I'm going to be told by Media Composer that there was no title found at the mouse location. Do I want to add a new blue title effect? And of course, if I wanted to, I could simply say, okay, that effect would be added and I could get in and start working. But because I've already added the effect right here, I'm just going to say cancel. And of course, let's right click and let's say add edit title. I'm going to be brought to the quick edit window as always. And what we're going to do is simply click on the title designer button to head into the new blue Tyler Pro interface. Now, before we get rolling here, I do want to point out that by default, assuming that you're working in a version of Titler Pro that does have the Elastic Timeline, by default, that Elastic Timeline is turned on. If you want to turn it off, it's actually very easy to do. All you need to do is simply come right down here to where it says Elastic, and you can turn that Elastic Timeline off right there. Now, you're going to notice that what we now have inside of our timeline is a stretch of a clip that's going to be the exact same length as the clip that it was applied to inside of Media Composer. You'll see that this title is 6 seconds and 17 frames long. Okay, And by default, you'll see that if I head back here, a fade has been put onto this title. Now, for some reason, we didn't want that fade. It's very easy to remove. You'll notice that we can twirl down that layer, and you'll see that there's the fade in right there. So all I have to do is simply select the fade, and I can just simply hit Delete and Delete. Okay, so let's get in and let's add a preset animation to this text. Really a great way to get started and to get yourself rolling as quickly as possible with Titler Pro. Now how we access these presets is very simple. We can simply head to the library tab up here in the upper left hand corner and you'll see that we have a bunch of different categories that we're going to have access to different things like textiles and things like that. But what we want to do is have access to transitions. Now something that I do want to point out before we move on is that if you actually do head on over to the new blue effects website up to the product section over to titling you're going to notice that there's a section called titler pro extras where you do have the ability to get in and purchase additional add-ons you know if for some reason you know you needed to get some more inspiration and you didn't want to get in there and create stuff because you didn't really have the time you can get in and purchase any of these presets and they'll become accessible to you inside of titler pro inside of one of these categories here depending on the package that you purchase okay but let's get down here and let's talk about transitions now i'm just going to pick an animation here and let's pick um let's just pick a fly in effect here now what i really like about these presets is that you don't need to start double clicking on them to get an idea of what they look like all you actually have to do is just hover the mouse over one of them and you'll see that immediately the timeline will start playing a preview and show you exactly what this preset is going to look like okay now i think well you know what why not why don't we just pick this preset here the following letters and all i have to do to apply it to this title 
is to simply double click on it. The great thing is you'll notice that a bounding box has now appeared around my text and I can actually see the transition down here inside of my timeline. I can come back and hit play. There's the animation. If I'm not happy with the speed of that animation, all I have to do is just simply drag it to the desired duration, come back and hit play, and there we go. Now, of course, if I wanted to add an animation out, all I need to do is, again, simply head back to the library. Let's just hover over one of these here. Um, sure, why don't we just choose Letters Right? All I'm going to do is simply double click on Letters Right. Now, if you don't know, because they're both called Flyin', which is the category that the the preset came from over here, you'll notice again if I come to attributes inside of the transition section, I can actually select either one of these and it will tell me that this transition is a falling letters preset and this transition here is a letters right preset. And of course we can get in and we can adjust the parameters of the animation if we wanted to. We can even get in and turn on keyframing or reverse the animation if necessary. Now, obviously I don't wanna to have two in transitions. I wanna have one transition coming in, one transition going out. So let's just take my letters right transition. I'm just gonna take it, just drag it right down here to the end of my clip. And now I can simply come back to the beginning of the timeline, hit play, there's an animation in, and here's an animation out. Very quick and very simple. And of course, if I just let it play, it's just gonna loop through. But what I'd really like to do is just send this right back to Media Composer now. So all I'm going to do is, of course, simply close the title interface here. What we're going to do is just apply to this title. We're going to give Titler Pro a second just to cache this effect here. Of course, I'll then be brought back to Media Composer. All I need to do now is simply come right back here, hit play, and there's my animation in. And we'll give this a second, and then you'll see my animation out. Very, very cool. And of course, very quick and very simple. Okay, now let's get in and let's talk about creating keyframes inside of your titles. What I'm gonna do is let's just create a new instance of this title here. I'm just gonna lift that out here. I'm just going to, of course, add a few edits in here. And again, you can see that my, you know what, let's try to make this a, a, an even duration here. Let's make this five seconds here. And I'm just gonna remove this second edit here. There we go. And let's add our instance of Titler Pro again. Simply drag and drop, there we go. And I'm going to right click. We're going to come into the add edit title button. I'm going to click on the title designer here. And I'm going to, again, just for the purpose of what we're doing, I'm just going to remove the elastic timeline. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to start out and I'm going to give this text a little bit of a style here. So let's just pick one of our styles here that come with Titler Pro. And I think I'm just going to choose the baseball style here. Sure, why not? I'm just going to double click on that. And I think I'm going to type in my name here. So let's just type in Kevin. McAuliffe. Okay. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to animate this text coming in from the left, and then we're going to animate it out by going down off the screen towards the bottom. Now, this is very, very simple to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up by setting up my first position, or basically the position where my title is going to land in my animation. So all I'm going to do is simply take the title, I'm going to drag it down here to the lower left hand corner, right about there. And once I have it where I want, what I'm going to do is just position the time bar exactly where we're going to want this title to rest in this position. And I'm going to come over here to the Attributes tab into the Object panel. And I'm going to come down and simply turn on keyframing right here. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to notice a keyframe has now appeared right at the start of my clip. And a new window has also appeared that has a keyframe called, appropriately enough, Keyframe 1 located inside of the keyframe dialog window. Now, to add a second keyframe is very simple. All I need to do is simply click on the little plus icon right here, and you'll notice there is keyframe number two. Now, I did say that this was gonna be the resting position after our title slides in, so what I can do is I can either drag back to the beginning of the timeline, or I could simply come up and just simply click on keyframe one, and I'll immediately be taken to that keyframe. Now, of course, we do have the fade in located here at the bottom of our, or at the start of our clip here, and I'm just gonna delete the fade out as well. And let's come back to this keyframe. Again, I can click on keyframe one to jump back to the beginning, and to adjust this keyframe, very simple. I could, of course, just take the text, drag it where I want, or I could just come up to the slider here for the X position. Let's just slide it right off the screen here, just like such. And once I've done that, I now have the animation all set to go. Boom. Okay. Let's again come down to about the four second mark. Perfect. What we're going to do is add another keyframe. And when this is done, we're going to have it slide out of the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to come down to the end. Of course, again, simply add keyframe. And you see how simple this is to just get in and add keyframes as we go. 
Okay, all I'm going to do now with this keyframe is I could, you know, I think I'm just going to do it up here inside of the Y position here. We'll just drag it right down and out of the frame. And basically, I've just created a very basic, very simple animation, just like such. Now, of course, if I didn't want it to be such a hard stop when the animation is happening, I could always get in and smooth the interpolation by simply checking the smooth interpolation checkbox right here above the keyframe window. Of course, once we're done and we're happy with our animation, I could simply close the title interface here. I'm just going to apply it to this title. Again, you could see lightning quick out of Titler Pro. Hit the space bar, and there's our animation all set to go. Now, really, this should be as simple as it is to create, you know, title rolls, title crawls, whether you're creating something that's going to go along the bottom of the screen. Maybe it's, you know, for an infomercial or even a credit crawl for a TV show or even a feature film you can quickly and easily do inside of Titler Pro. Okay, let's move on now and let's talk about the Elastic Timeline. Now, before we talk about the Elastic Timeline, I do want to point something out about this title. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to come back into this title. I'm going to simply select Add Edit Title. We're going to come to the Title Designer and I want to remove this last keyframe here. And once I've removed that keyframe, I'm just going to close the Titler Pro interface here. Of course, we're almost instantly back inside of Media Composer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to hit play. You'll see my title slide in. And of course, it's just going to sit there until we get to the end of the title. Now, we have a bit of a problem here. Now, in most cases, if we have a five second long title and that's all we need it to be, it's not really a problem. But here's where the problem comes in. Let's just say hypothetically, the producer or the director says, well, you know what we would really like to do? Let's just extend this title down another few seconds. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to, you know, be specific. I'll just pick an arbitrary time here. I'm just going to come down. I'm just going to extend this clip down or this title down. But take a look at what has happened. Because I've created that as a basically a hard and fast five second animation, the title is going to come in. It's going to stay up there for five seconds. And then it's just going to cut off because there's no more of this title available. So you can obviously see where this can become a problem. Now, this is a very common problem you might run into inside of Marquee. You've gone in, you've created an animation inside of Marquee, you've rendered it out. Oh, you need to make a change. Got to go back into Marquee, got to redo the animation, extend things out. But you know what? The team at New Blue Effects has taken that into consideration when coming up with the elastic timeline. Let me show you how it works. What, do, what I'm going to do, why don't we just set up a new title here again, okay? I'm just going to come in very quickly here and let's just add a new title, okay? Just drag and drop. Now we want to make sure that we're dragging and dropping that onto the second layer here. There we go. We're going to right click. We're going to say add edit title. Of course, we're going to come into the title designer. And you know what? Let's just stick with the standard default text for the purposes of what we're doing. Now, what I'm also going to do here is just make sure that I do remove that fade in and fade out here. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so there's our standard text and we you know we could stick it again here down here in the lower left hand corner and let's put a couple of animation presets on. I'm going to come back to the library. Let's come into fly in again and let's just choose uh, let's just choose a fast right transition here. There we go. I'll just double click on that. Now I don't need it to be that fast here. Let's have it or that slow. Let's actually just have this happen much faster here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here at the end is I'm going to add another one here and let's just choose, uh, let's choose peel letters. Why not? I'm just going to double click again. Of course, we're going to take this preset, just drag it right down to the end. So basically what we have is a start and end animation. Now, one thing that I also want to point out that's actually kind of cool here, and I'm just going to speed up the fly in, is I want to point out what might almost look like a bit of a jump in the animation. I'm just going to play this here, okay? You'll see the animation in happens fine, and what happens to the timeline once it gets right to there is that it jumps a little bit. Now, most people might think, well, maybe, Kev, that's because of drop frames, you know, or something like that, but here's what's important to keep in mind. Right now, if you take a look at the duration of this text animation that we're creating, it's six seconds long. You can see that right over here. The only thing is, is that you'll see that our actual duration of our title is five seconds long. So what exactly is going on? Well, what Titler Pro is doing that's very cool is that it knows that the effect or that the clip that it's working with is only five seconds. So what it's doing is it's getting to the point where it knows that it's not going to be using any frames in the animation because this is an elastic timeline 
and it's removing those frames from the animation to take a six second animation that we've created or a six second title we've created to give it to me and show me what it's gonna look like inside of that five second title that I've created in my timeline. It's a very cool and very interesting way to do things. It basically gives you an accurate representation of what your animation is going to look like. Now, here's how the elastic timeline works. You saw that the problem we ran into in our timeline was the fact that once we got to the five second mark, basically we had nothing, our, our title just ended. What the elastic timeline gives us the ability to do is to create animations at the top and tail if we want to, and we can then tell Titler Pro that no matter what the duration is of the title that's applied to, you're going to keep that animation at the top and the animation at the tail the same duration, and we're going to pick this specified range for you to take and extend however you need to to fill the allotted time that we've extended our title to in our timeline. So how it works inside of Titler Pro is that anything that falls inside of the orange range of the elastic timeline is not going to be altered. This is going to be left exactly the same, exactly the way that it is. Anything that falls into the green section of the animation, and I'm just going to back this up here so that our animation is inside of the end orange section, anything that falls into green is what we're going to allow it to extend down to compensate for whatever we've extended in our timeline. Now, of course, to add, you know, maybe at some point in the middle of our animation, we're going to want our title to spin around and reveal something else. We can easily add sections to the elastic timeline by simply right clicking and saying add region. And of course, what you probably saw in there as well is that we can right click and delete the fixed region as well. But if we added a region to the middle, we can, of course, extend, you know, lengthen or shorten that range however necessary. But in this case, I'm just going to delete the fixed range just like such. So what I've done is I've actually created the elastic timeline so that the start animation and the end animation won't be altered. So let's close our title. What we're going to do is we're going to apply this just to the title. Again, lightning quick out of Titler Pro. And you'll see that the animation plays back exactly the way that we think that it should. There we go. Boom, slides in. Here we go. Transitions out. So what I want to do now is I want to take this title and let's just extend it down, I don't know, four seconds, okay? I'm just going to go plus four seconds. I'm going to mark that as my out point. I'm going to extend this title down. And the problem we had before was that the title didn't extend down. It was just a blank space that we had at the end of our title. But now if I extend the title down, you're going to notice that if I come back to the beginning, there's the animation exactly the way that we had it. Guess what? The title's now been extended all the way down to the end. So we have that animation at the end exactly the same way that it was inside of that five second title, but now of course taking up the space of nine seconds. This really is a very different way for Media Composer editors to work inside of their timeline and a very simple way to get in and extend animations very quickly and very easily without actually altering the animation itself. Okay, so I hope this tutorial series has really given you a good foundation to get you up and running with Titler Pro. What's important to keep in mind is that now that we're moving to larger than HD timelines, we don't have access to the title tool or the marquee title tool, so why not use this fantastic tool that you have at your disposal that's probably been hidden away and you didn't even know that was there, but it's a powerful titling application that I guarantee you'll be able to use in every production that you work on and it's going to wow and amaze your clients every time.